We have 100 days to beat Power World Hardcore. Can we do it? Who knows? We have 5 bosses, 1 life, let's see how far we can get in our 100 days. We start off our 100 days by collecting some stones, some sticks and making ourselves a nice little crafting bench. We collect some red berries along the way and collect some palladium fragments which we will need for some power spheres. Using the tools I had acquired I beat the crap out of this Lambo and made him my friend. I made some cloth clothes and of course I made a bow to go with those clothes and some arrows. I then used these arrows to tame said penglets. Wow. I worked my way all the way over to the first tower, I unlocked the fast travel right next to it and I went this way because we was going to build our next base right here at the desolate church. So I threw all my pals in there and started building a wooden foundation and a bed for me to sleep in. I worked with my newly acquired pal friends to build some structures around the base. I then realised I could use some more power friends, so I went and caught this pox pox and that was going to allow us to smelt metal along with this primitive furnace. Using our small bit of metal we just gathered, we was able to make ourselves the improved workbench. We was then able to make our second piece of armour, a feathered headband, a metal pickaxe and a metal axe. Then along with it the free shot bow as well. Next on the agenda was a flyer, so I went out and attained this Nightwing. And to my luck it had Vanguard, which was pretty helpful to be honest. Along with our Nightwing there was an Ichthyr Deer and I took this opportunity to get our first rideable pal. There we go. Obviously it got to night time and there was a few daydreams lurking around the neighbourhood, so I took this opportunity and caught some of those too. At this point I was catching so many pals I had run out of power spheres, however my methods just make power spheres and catch pals at the exact same time. Don't ask. <laughs> I then put the Tombats back at the base as this was gonna allow us to automatically mine metal. I built this crusher as this was going to allow us to get unlimited palladium fragments and then I could use the palladium fragments to be able to make this pal gear workbench. Eventually I can make the Ichthyr Deer saddle to go along with it. My pals at this point didn't really help me, so uh, yeah. I then made my first shield using the civilization parts and we made a nightwing saddle to go with it, as well as the daydream necklace. This was going to allow us to have a daydream out as well as another pal. I then went zooming around on the Ichthyr Deer, as you do. It, you get around so, so quick. So quick in fact that I made my way all the way over to the first small settlement. As I was exploring I found a nest of Mammarists, there were so many Mammarists. If I could kill these right now I would have had so much power oil. I then needed obviously some ancient civilization parts, so the easiest boss was to actually kill Gamos. So me and my Ekvir deer took him on and we was pretty much able to obliterate this guy. As we had the civilization parts we was now able to make our power sphere workbench and this was going to allow us to unlock megaspheres literally unlimited megaspheres it's great so we was going to use the megaspheres to go and catch a few guy rats or rats i think that's how you pronounce it as well as this robin quill which for some reason wouldn't get caught in the ball no matter what this guy was not happy not happy one one bit <gasps> Going back home it was time to finally get into breeding so I made myself a little incubator and put in a few eggs that I had. Once they were done I managed to luckily get this hey Reptiro Crist which was crazy. For the start of the game that I was at it's insane, it has level 3 mining. At this stage of the game, insane honestly. And then me and my pals took 
45 years to be able to uh, make a little grill? I, I don't know. There was then a dinosaur running around in the neighbourhood, so I took care of him by making him my friend. I went on a little exploration adventure and I made my way all the way over to the volcano and this was just going to allow us to teleport in the future. I then took myself over to this Chiliot boss. Me and my Goriat, 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 I still can't say this guy's name, but he absolutely destroyed Chiliot. Using the materials I had gathered, I was able to make myself a weapons workbench. This was going to allow us to get a certain weapon called a crossbow and maybe a few guns in the future. Now obviously I needed more civilization parts, so I took myself over to the Penking fight. Me and my Robin Quill was doing pretty good, but this boss for some reason is stupidly, stupidly hard sometimes. I really don't get it. There was so much going on in this fight, it's crazy. The reason this fight is so hard is exactly this reason. Those penglips can literally freeze you and that could be the end of the hardcore run right there. But eventually our Goriat was able to take the penking out and there we go, another boss down. I went round and I found this bronze cherry, so obviously as you do, I caught that too. As I was adventuring round, I came across this Unimol and there you go, 100% catch rate, insane. And to my knowledge, it had swift, insane. 30% movement speed buff. We was going to make the Univolt saddle and gonna see how fast this guy could run. Now this Univolt was pretty fast, I have to admit. And obviously it was an electric power. We didn't really have many of those yet. We took our Goriat over to the desert I still don't know if I'm saying his name right, and I probably will never will, but we needed a dig toys for the automatic mining situation, which we was going to have on our second base, and there we go, we had our first dig toys. I stumbled across this army of people, thugs, I don't, I don't really know, I really don't know. There were so many of them, but we was able to take care of them pretty, pretty easily. And then, to my surprise, there was a lovely, lovely serpent just waiting for us in this cage. So, I done my hero scene and I saved him. However, to my knowledge, this guy had Swift, Artisan and Work Slave. A crazy, crazy pal to get straight away. Now, I knew I would need a new base location, as the other one was a little bit crowded. So, I built a little platform here and moved everything over. I as well built a ranch and a few more, obviously, things we was going to need in our 100 Days Hardcore series. I then made myself a crossbow and I found my first shiny, would you believe it? Look at this little chickpea in the distance, it was crazy, I was so excited. In my lovely, lovely excitement, I got out my Univolt, not realising that it has a broken attack. After my frustration was over, I decided I was going to make myself a Mega Shield. My pals obviously needed a hot tub, so I delivered and we built ourselves a hot tub. I went along and I built myself a grappling gun, as well as put down our first breeding area. I wanted to scout out a new base location for our metal, so I destroyed our old one boop, and built the new one in this location. It was now time that we enter our next dungeon, and this one was the Dragon Dungeon. Wings of White, the Quiven. Now, I wanted to try and tame this Quiven because I thought, I don't know, it's quite a cool pal to have. So I sent in Gorat, we was able to dodge this Acid Rain attack by just running. Just didn't stop running, shooting out with a Frostbow, and we let Robin Quill do some massive, massive damage with its attacks. Luckily, I was able to throw a few Pal Spheres, and eventually we had our friendly pal Quiven. There we go.
There was going to be a few pals that I needed for eventually making a very specific recipe known as the cake. And to do that I would need a load of mozzarinas. After catching a few of the mozzarinas, aka the cows, I was able to go back and make ourselves the power condenser. Then eventually take out this azobe for some more civilization parts. Obviously, I went over to this place, also known as Number One Wildlife Sanctuary. There were some cool pals over here that I would need for breeding. So we took over the island with our Gorat. There was an Ekvir Deer Terror. Which wanted to be our friend. One of the pals I was looking for on here was Penking, and we managed to get him exactly right now. A little while later, I crashed, I came back, and apparently I was in the snow? I, I have no clue. I made my way back to my house, picking up a few ice eggs, and we got ourselves a Sibilex out of it as well. Using the Sibilex and the high tier cloth, I was able to put down a few beds and go out at night and try and catch a few bee guards. We was going to need some power generation at some point, so I made this power generator for our base. It had gotten night again and I needed a, a new updated flyer, so I went for Hellzephyr. I went round at night trying to get as many Hell Zephyrs as I could, catching a few, and this one was specifically very, very good. As you can see, this has Runner, a 20% speed boost. Crazy. Now, the power I wanted to breed was Anubis. I needed a Penking and a Bushi for this to get our OP Anubis. So I bred those two up with our cakes and. There we go, we had our first Anubis for our base. After a little while AFK, that was actually a Lambo. Another shiny, I couldn't actually believe it. Look how happy he was. So, obviously as you do, I made him my friend with a 100% catch rate. Look at that, we had a shiny. I was going to need to go to the desert, so I built some heat resistant metal armor, and of course bred up some more creatures. If I breed a Penking and a Reptiro Christ, I was able to get myself a Ragnarok. Now this was good because it had a level 3 kindling and was going to make the metal production and cooking so much faster. Using the armor I just made, I was able to go into the desert and find our next settlement. There was a Suzuka, which was kind of scary to be honest because I was severely under leveled at this point, but I made myself all the way over to the next settlement. I then made my way all the way over to the third settlement on a volcano as well. As you do. I then decided I was going to try and challenge the Bon Cherry Aqua boss. And you know what? This one can be quite tricky. Obviously, I was using grass powers in my other previous playthrough. This time I had a electric power, so I was able to take this thing out pretty, pretty easily. With our new gigaspheres we was able to make, I was able to make this Bon Cherry Aqua our brand new friend. Okay, right, well, we're gonna do the first tower. I'm level 31, we have Anubis, we have Univolt, we have Daydream, we have Goriat. Goriat? Goriat? I think that's how you say it, but we should be able to hopefully destroy this thing. I've given um, my party uh, earth moves, so hopefully they use some of the earth moves, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Can't die. This is hardcore, remember. So let's go. Let's do it. I forgot the guy's name. It's Grisbolt and Zoe. That's it. It's Grisbolt and Zoe. It's like hell. Here we go. You just gotta remember to dodge. Just dodge, 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 and keep dodging. Grisbolt. I wanna get one to be able to get an Orzerk. Grisbolt and Zo. Let's go. Let's do it. Uh, I didn't even put my crossbow on. Dodged. Dodged. I don't think I dodged any of them. Oh god. 
Okay, we're fine. Go on, Anubis, I believe. Sand Tornado, lovely. Oh my god, we're destroying this thing. Go on, Anubis. Boom. Okay, nice. Boom. Very nice. Anubis can just walk around. He can just walk around and dodge it. He's... I can dodge that. I believe that was my one anyway, but... And 2,000 damage. Holy. We might have been a little bit over-leveled for this, but, you know, I had to prepare. Go on. Kick it. And one more attack. It should be able to kill it. Boom! We absolutely destroyed that boss. <laughs> that boss stood no chance at all. Holy crap. On it. I hear the lucky pal thingy majiggy. Where is it? It's a llama. Llama. I feel like I'm going to end up just killing this thing. So I'm just going to throw a hypersphere and hopefully it catches it. 29%. 30 percent Ease. Ease. Oh, look at that. We've got a lucky Melpaca. Okay. Go in the ball, go in the ball, go in the damn pearl sphere. Please. Oh my god. Please. Please. 13%. I just wasted one. Just, I just need one. Please, listen, you, you're just going to be friends. Oh, thank God. As I got back to the base, I was actually able to make our first production line and breed up some blaze towers as I was going. I got lucky and musclehead on this guy. This guy was strong as crazy. With all the materials I'd gathered, I was able to make a large storage unit and this was going to allow us to store so many items. Now it was time for our next boss. This was the Relaxosaurus Lux. Obviously we had our new OP Anubis. I was ready. This guy was so, so OP. In fact, it just absolutely just murked him. He was gone. He was absolutely obliterated. Then I came back to the base and there was a lucky little Kremis here waiting for me. So, as you do, I made him my little friend. So we added our another Lucky Power to our collection. And then I bred up another Anubis. Thing. Ever. Oh my god. Look at this. Wait, where is it? This Anubis. Musclehead Lucky and Burly Body. Oof. Jeez. That's kind of crazy. So it's got 45% attack. I then built myself an improved furnace. As you do. Oh my god, little pengo. And then apparently there was another little penguin. A little bigger penguin. But, you know, another lucky to add to our collection. Yeah, we've got a lovely, lucky little penguin. Oh. Now it's time to get serious. We could make ourselves the Hard Zephyr Saddle. And this was going to allow us to have a super, super fast flyer. Obviously, we had the Hell's Effort with a 20% movement speed buff from before, so I took him out for a spin, and he was pretty quick, to say the least. After coming back from my little spin, I was going to make a Mega Glider, and, you know, there was another Kremis. So I made him my friend too. I had so many lucky friends, but we took down this Lunaris with our new Blaze Hell. There we go, we got a load of civilization parts and a few things we could sell. So, while I was at it, I went round and destroyed a few more bosses, such as this Bron Cherry and, and this Mammarist. Our Blaze How was able to do a crazy, crazy, crazy amount of damage to this Mammarist, as obviously it is a fire type versus a grass type. I definitely didn't want to catch the Memorist anyway, but it's fine. It's fine. What the fuck? Hello? Oh. Um. Did you... Did you... 
He's murdered them. Oh, what the fuck? Jeez. I'm getting out of this neighborhood. After watching some NPCs get murdered, I went back and I made myself some metal armor, some cold resistant metal armor, because we was going to the snow. Also made myself some more gigaspheres as well, as you can never have too much. I went and obviously got this more sander with our nice little uniform because we was gonna need to breed him at some point. Obviously the Ray Hound we caught before and the Mosonda we just caught, I was able to eventually make myself a Grizzbolt and we was going to need this for our breeding to be able to get a power later on. I used the power cells that we had gathered so far to power up our Anubis and a few other creatures we had too. However I was pretty poor in this department. I then just got the most broken one ever and then used our army of Anubis to make a few bets for our lovely lovely pals. After breeding our Grisbolt with a Relaxosaurus we managed to get a Orzerk. Now this Orzerk was one of my favourite pals because it has some really cool unique abilities. You get more water fluids while fighting with him from water pals and obviously he just has some crazy crazy abilities so obviously as you do I took him for a little spin. Yeah. That ability might actually be my favourite in the game. I'm not even kidding. Okay, we're going to do the second boss fight. I've gave everyone in the party some fire moves. Um, we're just going to see how this goes. I've got all sec, Nanubis, Blaze, Hell, Hell's Effort and Univolt. So, let's just go and absolutely send it. It's not supposed to be for this one either, but... I guess we'll find out. Lily and Lyleen, I think, I think it is. <laughs> Lily and Lyleen, okay, let's go. Go on Blaze Hell, big damage, big damage, nice damage, oh my god. Go on, damage, boom, nice. The tornadoes, even more nice. Ah, oh. nice dodge, tornado, and electrified. Boom! Huge damage. And spear, bang! There we go. We absolutely ripped that one apart. God dang! There we go. Nice. Second boss completed. So now we're on to that boss over there, which is an Orzak itself. So we're going to have to get some Earth Pounds. But I believe we've got this. I found myself in new lands beyond anything I'd ever seen. And I made myself some pure quartz. I made myself all the way over to the snow biome. And I found these creatures called Krylonix, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Now I need one of these for breeding, of course. So this was pretty dangerous, but I managed to get one and I could eventually breed it with the Grizzbolt. I picked up a huge damp egg on the way and that gave us a Suzuka Aqua. But the real thing I needed was this Astagon. Astagon. I found this black marketeer just chilling in some bushes, so I took care of him and stole his money and his gold key, which could come in handy pretty, pretty soon, who knows. Now I needed to adventure up to the top of the volcano, obviously if you see my grass pals play through, it was rough, but for this one I had a flyer, so it was so, so easy and I could just fly all the way up to the top of the volcano, which is the third tower. As I got back home, I realised I had a new engram. It's a legendary armour metal helmet. I don't know where I got it from or what happened, but I had it. I, I must have killed a boss and it dropped it from something, but 
we got ourselves a legendary metal helmet and this was going to be crazy for us it was going to make us pretty much so much more tanky than we already was so i went round and killed a few more bosses there we go anubis took care of the helvetra and then we used our blaze tower to take out this one po at Botan. With all the resources we had gathered, I would actually be able to make my second production. There we go, and this was going to allow us to create a ton more things. Such as refined metal armor and refined metal tools. With my little friend Anubis here, I was able to make our electric cooker as well. And make a ton, a ton of cake. Now, I really wanted to make a Shadow Beak, and I was going to need an Astagon, a Kitsun, and eventually I could get myself a Shadow Beak. So that's exactly what I did. I managed to pass down the stats as well, so we got Lucky, Muscle Head, and a few other stats on it as well. This guy was going to be crazy for us. I then built myself the Grizzbolt Minigun. A crazy thing. I never even got to try this before. So, I did my best, and, you know... I whacked out the minigun. It was sick. I loved it, honestly. Okay, we are gonna go and do tower number three with Alex and Orzerk. I have everything that I can to my best of my, my ability, I think, so far. I have some items on me, but don't really matter anyway. So we're going to put on our best gear, like so. We are slowly dying, but it's fine. We're just going to send it. Let's go. I believe he's called Alex and Orzerk. Again, I have no idea what level he's supposed to be, but... Let's go. We prepared as much as we can. We got Anubis, we got all our pals. They've got Sand Tornado, so it's time we destroy this thing. Anubis, go. 130k. We, we got this. We got this, I believe. We do ground damage with Anubis as well, so. Oh, he's doing so much damage. We just gotta dodge his attacks. As long as we can dodge his attacks, we'll be fine. Go on, Anubis. Like that one. Ow. We're gonna have to go on Shadow Beak. Do some damage. Nice. Decent damage. Decent damage. Gonna reload. Nice kick. Huge. Boom. Boom. Dodged. Bow. Dragon move. Ow. Dodged. Dodged. And he dodged it and... Oh. Okay. Boom. And boom. Okay. Okay. Nice. Ooh. There is the third boss down. And we can put on our heat resistant gear again. And there we go. So we've done Alex and Wozak. Very nice, very nice. I felt like I was strong enough to try and take on a few more harder bosses. So uh, this human type got wrecked. Like absolutely wrecked. I took my Shadow Beak out and the Divine Destiny ability was crazy on it. And our Wozak just told him that he wasn't allowed to live anymore. Now this was one of our yeah. hardest challenges yet. We was actually about to go fight Laloon Not. Now this is a level 49 pal and it can be quite dangerous. As you can see here, we froze and our shield was completely gone. If I got hit at this point, it could have been game over, but luckily it went for Anubis instead. My dodging skills were not up to par, I'll be honest on this one, they really wasn't. But I managed to survive just about, you know, dodged a few attacks I feel like. And we was actually able to fight off, lightly knocked, 
and our Anubis could eventually take care. I did try and throw the Pal Sphere, but obviously we needed some higher level Pal Spheres for a level 49 Pal. So I did what I did best, and ooh, bow. There we go. Bali knocked has been taken care of. After building the sphere assembly line number two, I built this electric furnace. The other one I built was actually a refined forge, not an electric furnace, but this was going to allow us to make some power ingots for a load of different recipes in the future, and of course legendary power spheres. One fight. Well, that uh, it didn't go to plan, so I ran hell away. I decided I was going to try and fight the Christmas and Paladus, but it didn't really work. So I went home and made the Shadow Beat Paddle instead. The next boss was actually Marcus and Valerius, so I was going to need a powerful water type. So I bred a Yormantide and then found a lucky Diahow on the way back. To get a few other powers, I needed to go over to uh, Wildlife Sanctuary number 2. However, I didn't realise how strong some of these powers on this island are. It is pretty dangerous neighbourhood. There was a Yormantide Ignis here, which absolutely just shredded my health and my armour. Like, it was crazy. So, I tried my best to catch him, however, the power spheres I had wasn't really the best either. And I didn't really have too many on me either. So. I did what I did, and I got the hell out of there, again. <laughs> if we was going to be able to take out the last two remaining bosses, we was going to need some serious firepower. So I built the weapon assembly line number two, and I also got this blueprint for some cold resistant power metal armor, which was crazy, because it had a lot more health than the regular power armor does. Then I also built the last shield we can make, which is a hyper shield. So, you know what you do with the other one? You just yeet it into the bin. I then went on some resource grinding and made myself some rockets and the rocket launcher. Okay, here we go. This is what we're going to go with. We are going to go for our two water pals, Orzerk, Shadowbeak and Anubis. This is our chance at beating Phalaris. Which is a fine type power. So here we go, we're just gonna send it. Going to absolutely send it. Let's go. It's kind of frightening how this guy has security. Right? I always thought that. This is gonna be the toughest fight we've had yet, but I believe we've got this. We've got a load of rockets on us, we've got our shotgun. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, here we go. We have Marcus and Phalaris. I want to send out a tide first. We're gonna make. We're gonna dodge that. We're gonna dodge that one, and we're gonna hit him with a with a rocket. Nice, Yulman tied. Right, right. We've got eight minutes. Right, I'm just gonna start hitting it with rocket launchers 24/7 now. Huge damage. Right, I'm gonna bring out Suzuka Aqua for a little bit. Nice, huge attack. Ooh, watch out. We can dodge that one. Not bad. Shadow Beak with the water attack and then the rocket. Oh. Right, here comes the lightning bolt. Ooh. Okay, nice, we're fine. And finish it. There we go. Phalaris and Marcus have been destroyed. Okay, it is time that we go and we destroy this tower. I'm going to give it a go, I'm going to see how we get on. 
obviously we only have one life, so if we can't do it, we can't do it. But I've got Chiller uh, because basically it allows me to have dragon damage on my rocket launcher, and hopefully it does a crap ton more. I put some stat uh, stats into my attack as well, and also got some food, so we are just going to absolutely send it. And here we. Ooh, you'd think it'd be a nice like trainer with this. I don't know. I feel like you'd think it'd be a nice trainer. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Shadowbeak and Marcus. I think it is. Victor and Shadowbeak. Marcus was the flower one, wasn't it? Ooh, oh, huge damage, huge. Okay, okay, we're fine. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ooh, ooh, okay, that hurt. That's fine. Gonna use the rocket. We've already got it down. Okay. I'm gonna put you away for that. Ooh. Okay. Oh my god, right, Chillit is going to have to go away for a bit to heal, so we're going to bring out Shadowbeak, and Shadowbeak can, can do some damage, hopefully. Look, do some damage, please! Okay, lightning attack, not bad. Not bad damage. Chillit's at half health, we can get on Chillit and do another rocket. We can dodge that, nice. Bring out Yormantide again. I'm just going to let Chillit heal, because we can't lose Chillit. We can run around and chill it. Ooh, chill it, no, no, no. No, chill it is dead. Oh, okay, that's fine. We got this. Shadow Beak, up to you. We got. Do one of those and then dodge. Keep going. Oh, that's. Okay. Now I'm on fire, which is not good. Well, Zerk should be fine, he's a dragon anyway, so... Nice, huge. Another attack. Alright, he's got 20k left. 20k left. Oh, please, I've got to not be on fire for this. 3k. Ooh, dodge the ice. Dragon. Nice. One more rocket, come on. Come on. Finish it. 2k. And dead. There we go. We managed to do it. We managed to defeat Shadow Beacon Victor. God. Holy crap. That was insane. That was actually insane. But we managed to do it. There we go. 100 days. And we beat. We beat it. We beat How Old Hardcore. Would you believe it? Kind of crazy. We managed to survive 100 days in Hardcore Power. I can't believe I've done it, and there were some close calls on there as well. If you liked the video, make sure you leave a like, and maybe subscribe. I'm also streaming on Twitch every so often, so try and check me out over there, but hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, guys. Bye!